Hi, I'm Deanna Duke, and this is Crunchy Chicken TV. So I'm standing in the backyard of a Southern California home and it's not too uncommon for uh, these types of uh, fruit trees to be in people's backyards. And so today I wanted to show you what a dwarf banana tree looked like, or these are banana plants actually, and it's a dwarf Cavendish, otherwise known as a Carolina King. And at full maturity they grow about six to seven feet. I'm about six feet tall, so this one's a little bit bigger. Um, generally you want to plant them in containers because they tend to send out tons of little offshoots off the bottom of the tree and they'll pretty much take over your backyard kind of like a blackberry plant. So for people who live in more of the nor nor northern areas, um, this is a pretty unfamiliar plant to have growing in your backyard. These guys fruit out to the top, they'll send out a little shoot and off of that you'll get the bunch of bananas and you will you can get upwards of even 90 bananas off of one bunch. Um, with the dwarf Cavendish, the bananas are actually almost about full size what you'd see in the grocery store so and they're sweet flavored banana they're not like a plantain or anything like that so they're a really good fruit tree to grow if you live in in these areas of the country. These uh, banana plants are great for growing in zones 8 to 11. Um, they can handle some short freezes nothing too long otherwise they'll have some problems and probably will impact the, the fruiting uh, going on with them. Um, and if you poke around around the back here you can see how some of these plants are already doing some of these little offshoots here. So this is called the mother plant and it'll offshoot these little guys down here and when the offshoot is about half the size of the mother plant you can transplant them and put them in a new container. And so um, you can see there's a little guy growing over on this one as well here too. So these banana trees are kind of going to town down here and they're multiplying like crazy. So um, one nice thing about the banana leaves on these, uh, the younger ones, the leaves tend to be a little bit more reddish, but as they get to maturity, they're green. But you can use the banana leaves to steam vegetables or other kind of Chinese appetizers and that sort of thing. So you can use them in any, as a culinary device too for, for cooking and baking and that sort of thing too. So, so there's multiple uses besides just being a very cool looking plant to have in your backyard. They are a great fruit plant as well. So this plant here, as uh, you can see there's a couple offshoots here. This little stump guy in the middle here was the mother plant. It fruited about six months ago, so we took a little hatchet at that and our machete and cut that off so that it had space for the offshoot plants to grow. And so um, so these guys are probably maybe nine months to a year old. I'm sure the, they started off shooting a little bit while before the, the mother plant started fruiting. So, so this is a good example of what the plants look like kind of in between production. And uh, probably maybe about four feet tall at this point. So I'm sure it'll be producing lots of fruit this summer. I'm here with Chrissy Duke in her San Diego backyard and I wanted to ask her a few questions about this lovely avocado tree that you've got growing back here. Can you tell us a little bit how old this guy is? Well, I'm not quite sure how old he was when we acquired it, but it was planted about 10 years ago. Okay. And how big was it when you guys planted it? It was probably in height about half this, uh, the height of it now, but much thinner stock. Okay. And um, it was not bearing, hadn't bared its fruit yet. Mm -hmm. How long did it take, uh, or how many years did you have it before it started bearing fruit? About three years. About three years. About okay. three years. And about how many avocados did you say you guys get off of this per year? We've The last few years, we've actually gotten quite a few. I would say in the hundreds the last couple of years, although we did have a year that it seems to be common with citrus fruit and um, avocado trees that after a bumper crop year, it kind of goes into a state of shock, and so it will kind of hibernate for a year. Oh, okay. Have you tried where you trimmed it back more certain years and then you have a more even number or is it just... It, it, it doesn't seem to matter how far you trim it back, but you do need to trim it back because the weight of the avocados really take a toll on the limbs, mm -hmm. on the branches. And so you do want to keep it healthy as much as you can. And it, as you can see, the 
the leaves are not looking so good right now <laughs> because it's bearing its fruit right now. Oh, sure, all the energy is going to the fruit. All the energy is going to the fruit. Right. So to healthy it up, you do want to trim it back. And how often do you trim it? Is it just once a year or? Well, I'm year? not actually sure what okay. the experts say. Mm -hmm. We trim it. There's, we trim it generally right after we take all the fruit off. Oh, okay. And then, so my understanding is that the fruit doesn't ripen on the tree. It only ripens when, once you've taken them off. Is that true? It, that's exactly right. And mm -hmm. it takes a while. It takes much longer for it to ripen than you would generally find at the grocery store mm -hmm. because the ones at the grocery store have already been off the tree for quite some time. Sure. And so you want to give it a, a, probably a good week for them to ripen. Mm -hmm. And um, we made the mistake the first year of letting them stay on the tree to ripen, and we didn't get to eat any of them because they turned to rubber because we didn't know we were supposed to take them off. <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> I just figured they'd rot, but that's, that's bizarre that they would turn hard and rubbery. Yeah. And then when it's really windy, do you have a lot of fruit fall off of this, or are they on there pretty good? No, they're on there pretty good. The only time we've noticed that we've had um, a lot of fruit fall is when it's going into some kind of state of dehydration. Okay. They require an obscene amount of water, which is why generally they're grown on hills so that the water flows down to all the trees. You get all the runoff. All the runoff. And so we know that when it's really hot in the summertime, it will drop some. Okay. And then we, that's an indicator to us that we need to water it more. Okay. And people put things like PVC pipes drilled with holes so that they can put the actual um, hose right into the PVC pipe and it actually gets down to the roots a little better. Oh, okay. And then when do you get most of your fruit? Is that in around this now, is, January the, time frame? Right. For here, December, January, that's when the Haas avocados are supposed to be picked. Okay. So this is a Haas avocado. This fruit. is a Haas okay, avocado. Gotcha. And you can tell by the thicker bulb, you know, yeah. bumpy skin. Bumpy skin. Okay. And then what kind of um, food do you have to feed this and how often? Um, we use a citrus avocado tree food, and it's about every three months that you want to sprinkle a, a good portion of it around the area around the um, the trunk of the tree. Okay. Excellent. And then since you guys get so many avocados, I know last year you were trying to figure out a way of preserving them. And can you tell us a little bit about your experience with trying to save these since it's unlikely that, you know, you're going to sit down with 100 avocados and be able to snack them all day. Uh, the one, best so. way to try to utilize off all your avocados is to give them away. <laughs> because we tried last year, I made a really good effort to try to freeze them uh -huh. and um, take all the air out, double bag them, try to reduce as much moisture getting into them mm -hmm. as possible. And it just still turned into like an icy, watery avocado soup. Yeah. And uh, so I didn't have much success, and as far as I know, anybody who's had one hasn't had much success. Okay. So if there's a way out there, please someone tell me. <laughs> How about dehydrated avocados? <laughs> dehydrated <laughs> avocados. <laughs> Maybe an avocado powder, I don't know. But um, so I would be generous for anybody who has an avocado tree. You're not going to be able to eat them mm -hmm. all unless you have a family of 16 or something so yeah. I would give them away to friends make them a gift okay <laughs> can you pace it so that the fruit that you're taking off the tree what, how long is the actual season so what I, I would say it's about two months generally okay. I, I, I don't know that I push it past February because of our one year we got the rubbery thing starting yeah, exactly. to happen so I would I would pace it like you could probably pull a few off every week if you really like avocado. Mm -hmm. I'm the only one in my household who likes avocado, so that doesn't really work for us. Right, you got a big job set up for you. So <laughs> I eat as many as I can, and then we um, give them away. Okay. Well, shall we go check out the lemon tree? Sure. We're over by the Meyer lemon tree, and this uh, this tree is about the same age as the avocado tree, isn't it? Correct, but it's a dwarf lemon tree, so it's considerably smaller than the avocado tree or what a normal lemon tree would be. Okay. And then um, sounds like you use the same feed for, for the citrus? Yeah, I just went by what your local nursery would tell you to do, and we mm -hmm. use a combination avocado citrus tree food. Okay. And it's the same amount of, uh, like, every three months? Around every the base three of months the around the base of the, of the tree, and you want to spread it out about, you know, a foot to two feet around the trunk. Mm -hmm. And since you guys have had this for a while, it's uh, mature at this height now it's not going to get any bigger or mm -hmm. do you think it I think it's going to um, not get any taller I think it will get fuller mm -hmm. we had um, a really good year our first year and then um, we were a little unknowledgeable about what we were supposed to do with our lemon trees so it kind of went into a bit of shock after producing about 160 lemons on a tiny little tree <laughs> and so um, it's been recovering ever since okay so now on average you get 
we're still on our rebuilding years <laughs> and we're only getting a couple lemons every year but every year it's looking a little better it really went into a dormant state of shock when we had our bumper year okay. and um, so I did a little bit of research and found that that was not uncommon but I just kept trimming it back and as long as I saw that it was still alive inside the branch mm -hmm. um, I just kept watering it and feeding it and it's coming back a little bit more each year so I'm hopeful that it will come back to its original state but a good lesson for anybody is that if you have a tree and it's bearing a ton of fruit mm -hmm. in the early stages pick a couple off so that your tree is not especially with the dwarf trees you don't want to overstress them and so with the uh, the dwarf Meyer lemon do they produce year-round or is there a specific season for them no it's here? pretty much like avocados you're gonna get it from early late fall to early spring Okay. And they can stay on the tree a little bit longer without getting rubbery rather than an avocado. Sure. And then uh, what's the water requirements on the on the citrus? Is it he heavy of a water need? It's, it's um, not as heavy as the avocados, but it does require water. I think anything that bears fruit uses a lot of water and needs it to keep it going. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. I wanted to show you guys what a full-size mature lemon tree looks like. Obviously, it's quite a bit bigger than the dwarf Meyer, and this is also a different species of tree. So... Um, clearly you're going to have a different size of lemon with a different type of lemon on it. Um, and also, as you can see, it is Christmas. They've got Christmas lights in their lemon tree, which is really cool. Um, so there's quite a few lemons on here now. This is the end of December, so it's right in the middle of, a, of the crop for lemons. And so you can see a mix of some of these ones here that are a little bit more green, and then some of these ones down here that are more yellow and about ready to be used off the tree. Um, one of the other things I want to talk about with the citrus trees, you know, Chrissy had mentioned the amount of water it takes to feed these guys so that they keep their fruit on the tree. And one of the issues is really when you're living in an area that's so arid, you don't want to tr spend a tremendous amount of water watering your fruit trees. So one of the things I would suggest, particularly since most of the homes around here have these really awesome tile roofs, is to set up rain barrels on your downspouts and collect the water that way. Um, that way you get the water that you can use for feeding your watering your fruit trees without really worrying too much about spending not only the cost on it but also using water resources in an area that needs it for other things. Um, the benefit of using the tile over using a composite roof is that with the tile you don't get the material runoff with it. There's issues and there's the jury's still really out on whether or not using the runoff from a composite roof is safe for food crops because it does have little pieces of asphalt and other chemicals in there that can leach into your food. With trees, it's not as big of a deal, but definitely with all the tile roofs down here, it's great. If you're concerned about the pollution that settles onto the roof in between rains, there's diverters you can get on your downspouts that will flush the first few minutes worth of water off the downspout. It won't go into your rain barrel, and um, that way it makes sure that you don't have any of the stuff that's been collecting on your roof going into those rain barrels, so you can use that for other food crops as well. If you're want to go real crazy, you can set up a cistern system as well if you have a lot of uh, citrus or avocado type trees for watering your plants. So that's the recommendation I would have for those of you who live down in the southern areas that have these fantastic tile roofs for that. Hola, me llamo Diana Duke y esto es Crunchy Chicken TV. Ha <laughs> ha.